Why, you know, it is the greatest. The way a Remington Quiet Rider helps stimulate interest in the young people, brings out the best. You know something? The minute you get your hands on this wonderful portable, you find yourself with an urge to express yourself. One, the 88-character standard keyboard, exactly like the latest office typewriters. Hey guys, welcome back to the Kib related video. Today, we're looking at the Veil 87 that was sent to me early by Techware for review. But as always, my opinions are my own. They're seeing this video at the same time as you do. We'll talk about the features later and why it might be my daily driver for now on. But for now, let's unbox this rather affordable keyboard. In the quite simple black box, we get the bare bones keyboard itself wrapped in PE foam a hiccup and switch puller combo, the manual, as well as a braided USB Type-C cable. Techware also decided to give me their new pearl purple switches, which are light tactiles that are pre-lubed and are made out of nylon for the bottom and amoy for the stem and top housing. With that out of the way, let's build this. Since this is a bare bones kit, you're free to choose any combination of switches and keycaps you want to build. For mine, I'll stick with the pearl purple switches as well as adding my own EPVT Skydoll set. Later on, we'll hear it stuck. For now, let's discuss its design and layout. The Tycor Bell 87 is an all plastic construction board with your choice of either a solid white housing or a smoky black variant. It's sturdy and doesn't exhibit any creaks. I got mine in the smoky variant and it looks quite nice paired with a white aluminum plate you can barely see inside. The sides house is nothing but a recess where the Type-C cable could go, while the rear incorporates the clean techware logo printed on the top left side of the keyboard. The back shows the two-stage rubber feet to adjust the angle of the board, as well as an inlet for the Type-C port and cable channels. I wish techware could have put the Type-C cable on the edges as opposed to the center, as plugging cables on this is a hassle. But if you don't change cables that much, I guess it's not a problem. Lastly, we could see the Mac and Windows toggle, as well as a blank switch cutout on the case, which I presume is an on and off switch for a future dual mode or even tri mode version. On the front, we have a high propel design that has the TKL layout, flank front and center, while the top right incorporates the caps lock, scroll lock, and Windows lock LEDs that are illuminated white when activated. One of the highlight features of this keyboard that separates it from the others that I see is that it has a 5-pin south-facing hotswap PCB with gale sockets. This means that this keyboard will not have any interference with cherry propel keycaps, unlike its competitors. This is the main reason why I chose to mount my APBT set, as it has one of the lowest propels even on cherry standards, but in fact, it doesn't interfere with my switches. Otherwise. The PCB is a fairly standard one, having perky RGB that can be modified internally with the commands listed on the manual, or through their own software which can be found on their website, and as always, I'll link it down below. And finally, the layout is a typical ANSI layout that covers the top to TKL. This means that any cheap 104 key set can fit in this. The stock plate mounted stabs are great on this keyboard. Later on, you'll hear a sound test, but in short, they are factory lubed out of the box, don't have prongs that stick out, and are a delight to use, even stuck. I only heard a little ticking on the enter key, but the spacebar tabs exhibit none at all. The PCB, from the looks of it, should support screw-ins as well, as it has the necessary holes. Though, you might need to custom cut a plate. I'll update you guys in the comments on if it can support screw-ins with the default plate. Just know that this keyboard has room for upgrading. Speaking of the plate, the board by default has one made out of aluminum that unfortunately can be easily scuffed when you remove switches. Luckily, it's not that noticeable though as it's being blocked by the keycaps. The plate is also designed in a way so that it touches the isolation gaskets situated on the edges of the board. As for mounting, it's kind of a hybrid of a gasket mount and a tray mount. 
which is weird, as they're in silicone gaskets, but they do not exhibit or give any flex or bounciness to the board. There are also screws that help align the plate to the case, so that's why I'm not sure of the mounting. It's kind of the same as the one I saw on the PC75B+. What I do know is that this has some thick custom molded silicone pads on the inside to remove any hollowness or reverb inside the case. This is also aided by the plate foam stuck in between the PCB and plate to remove any potential metal ping coming off of the plate. Stock, the board sounds nice with the pearl purple switches. As you may know, I'm a big fan of light tactiles, and these pearl purple switches gives me all that while having a nice toned down sound. Even if it was pre lubed I still heard some lipping, but this can be resolved with some crytox. As for the board, as I've said earlier, I do not hear any plate ping, any hollowness, and even the stabs are good to go stock, which surprised me. Typically, boards in this price range sacrifice these crucial parts in order to make the price affordable, but the Bailey T7 did not. Speaking of the price, the Bailey T7 retails around 2,600 pesos or $47 and can be bought through their own store or through Gosu Gaming locally. And for what you're getting, I think it's a nice deal. I'll still try and modify this further next week and come up with my final conclusions. But for now, color me impressed. The budget TKL segment has a competition now and I'm all for it. How about you guys? Do you think it's a great keyboard for the price? Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. Once again, I'm John J. Bimaba, and I'll see you in the next video.